from Norman churches to holy wells, Lawrence of Arabia to General Eisenhower. These are just some of the highlights from today's little trip as we continue to explore the South Wales coast. Well, hello and welcome. As we're all still stuck at home and unable to travel, we're gonna to continue to explore places closer to home. And we're lucky to live in an area with so much open space and no crowds. As we research these little trips, it's amazing what fascinating stories and rich history we find in the local area, most of which we were completely unaware of. So getting back to today's little trip, we're doing the circular walk from Newton over to Candleston Castle, then to the River Ogmore, follow the river to the beach, then along the Wales coastal path back to Newton. The distance is around six miles. It may vary slightly depending on which path we take. I nearly forgot in the last video, I did mention Mel will be joining me on the next adventure. But as you can see, she's not here, but she's left a little message. Well, Mel, are you going to join me on today's adventure? Is that a trick question? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you coming? No. Why not? Because being with you in lockdown for seven or eight weeks is enough to test anybody. And I look forward to my break when you go out. <laughs> okay, then I'll let you off. <laughs> That's okay then. <laughs> So we're starting in Newton, in particular at Newton Church, official name St John the Baptist Church. Like the village which surrounds it, it was founded in the 12th century. The church's west tower is quite substantial. Originally it had a flat roof and was probably used as a lookout and a defensive tower. If you want to find out more about Newton, I've done a video on Porth Core where I mention Newton in more detail, and the links are below. In the southeast corner of Newton Green, you can find St John's Well, also known as Sanford's Well. It was named after Thomas de Sanford, who was knight in the order of St John of Jerusalem, who probably founded the church. At the side of the well, you can find the area which used to have the pump and the stone basin. But to be honest, the well itself could do with some TLC. Considering the history of the well, I think it needs some uh, looking after and some renovation. So as we start our walk, we may vary slightly from the paths, just to avoid contact with other people, as some of the areas can be quite narrow. But saying that, it's never that busy, even in the height of summer. Well, behind these gates, boarded up and for sale, used to be St John's School. And a young Eddie Izzard, the actor-comedian, used to go there, used to board there when he was very young. And we saw him in stand-up, and he mentioned his time in Porthcore, and he didn't even know Porthcore had a fun fair. The only thing he used to do is get the stale sandwiches he was given and run off into the dunes and bury them. <laughs> so there we are. Eddie Izzard went to school in Newton Village, Porthcore, at St John's. You can't really read the sign. It says Brineglois Avenue. And this is where we're going to turn left as we come from Newton along the public footpath to the dunes, in particular Newton Burrows. I forgot, I am going to put my uh, watch on to track the actual distance. As mentioned, I think it's about six miles, but it may be a bit longer because of the filming and going slightly off the paths. But normally it's around five and a half, six miles. Let's see, anyway, let's start the watch. So as you walk over Newton Dunes, 
which are now covered with grass, bushes and trees. It's hard to imagine, this used to be a rifle range. It's just east of Newton, used to lie Wigvach rifle range. And if you look carefully, you can still find the signs of its military past. So that's what we're going to do now, see if we can find any signs of the range. So you can see here, we've got the concrete foundations from a building. And that mound in the background, you can tell by the shape, is man-made. And that used to be one of the rifle mounds. There's a series of these across the dunes. Most of them are now overgrown. But at the very end, where we're heading, is the target area and bunker. And that's pretty much intact, so we're going to have a look at that later. The rifle range first appeared on maps back in the late 19th century. It was probably been used to train troops fighting in the Boer War. It was used again during the First World War, but extended into two parallel ranges during the Second World War. It was used by American troops from the 28th Infantry Division, who were based in and around Porthcourt. My mother was six in 1943 into 1944, and she remembers an American soldier lodging with them. So we're at the top of one of the rifle mounds, and as you can see, it's completely overgrown behind me. The targets were way over by that big hill in the background. Back in the 1940s, it would have been completely flat and no bushes or trees at all. And talking of the 1940s, that's where General Eisenhower comes into it. General Dwight D. Eisenhower came to Wales to visit the troops who were based in nearby Margham and also here on Newton Burrows on the 1st of April 1944, before they were sent to Normandy, France. The soldier who stayed with my mum and grandparents, they called Uncle Johnny. He actually survived the war, and when he got back to the US, he sent them all presents. Unfortunately, over time, they lost touch, which is a bit of a shame. It'll be interesting to see what happened to him and his family. Anyway, at least he survived the war, that's the main thing. So this area is a bit flatter, and about 50 yards away, you can see another rifle mound. And beyond that, in all the trees and undergrowth over there, that's where the targets were and the control bunker. And we're gonna have a look in there shortly. Let's go. As you can see, the path is marked. Newton to Candleston, circular walk, and there's a big yellow arrow going there. But first of all, to the bunker. And so here it is, the target area for the rifle range. There's actually two of these, one for each range. This one is the one we walked along and about a hundred yards over towards the sea is another one. I'm not going to walk down there now, but I was here a few days ago and I climbed down there and explored what's left and this is what I filmed. I do find this part of the walk really pretty, but it's a little Blair Witch project. And <laughs> I've just found this. <laughs> Who lives in there? 
what bizarre rituals have been going on. <laughs> As we continue the walk, I hope the path hasn't been closed off because of the unmentionable thing. No sign of it so far. Well, as you can see, the path isn't closed. As you can probably tell by my forehead, it's getting quite hot now. And we're on the steepest part of the walk, climbing to the top of the limestone ridge, which looks over to Laliston and Tillickston and over to Merthamara before we head back down to Candleston itself. What is amazing about the current situation is the uh, lack of traffic noise and plane noise. You can really hear all the birds. So there we are, we're still on track. This limestone ridge area, which overlooks Bridgend, Laliston and Tivixton, doesn't look like there's much here apart from farmland, but it's been in use for thousands of years. Iron Age flints have been found from burials, Bronze Age pottery and also Roman tiles have been found in the area. We've now joined the lane which goes down to Candleston Farmhouse, but as you walk down the hill, we'll take a sharp right to Candleston Castle itself and Merthamau Dunes. So this part of the trail, as you come down from the farmhouse and head towards Candleston Castle, often floods, water comes off the, the fields and forms this natural stream which flows out towards the river Ogmore. But luckily it's quite dry, it hadn't rained for weeks. So if you look here, you've got evidence where the stream actually runs when it rains. So those are Merthamara sand dunes, some of the highest in Europe. It's a great place as a kid to come up with a sledge and sledge down. You just look an idiot as an adult. <laughs> Near the dunes and next to the car park, you'll find Candleston Castle. It's actually a 14th century fortified manor house rather than the castle. I've already done a couple of videos on this, including a recent one just before Christmas about the stories and legends of Glamorgan. And again, I'll put those in the links below.
Merthyr Mawr Dunes were actually used as a location in a few scenes for David Lean's classic film, The Lawrence of Arabia. Yes, these dunes in South Wales actually doubled for the desert. And yes, I have done a film on this already and the link is below. So now we're going to continue towards the River Ogmore and then down to the beach itself. I forgot to mention, apologies for the bouffant hair. I haven't had it cut for about 11, 12 weeks. <laughs> and it's going a bit, uh, I don't know, 1970s American soap. So we finally made it to the River Ogmore and it's about 250 yards, 300 yards along the river bank down to the beach and we're going to follow the coastal path along the beach to Newton and back to the church. Normally you can't walk along the river bank here because it's so marshy but it's been so dry everything's dried up. So we're now on Newton Beach, walking back along the coastal path to Newton Village itself. This stretch is about three miles long. I was going to turn off and go back into the dunes and look for the Burrows Well, but my watch already says it's six and a half miles and I've got another couple of miles to go. So I'm getting a bit tired, so I'm going to go straight back to Newton Village. Like I said at the start, the journey is about six miles but I've been going off the path and filming and added a couple of miles to the trip by doing that. So now it's straight along the beach to Newton. You can't see it on the camera, but if you look carefully, you can actually see the tower of Newton Church over there. So we've done the trip and we're nearly back home. According to my watch I've done 7.6 miles but if you keep to the route and don't faff about filming it's six miles. Down to the river, across the beach we're there. It's about less than a quarter of a mile back to Newton so we'll leave it there. So don't forget to check out the videos I mentioned, Candleston Castle, Lawrence of Arabia and join us again. There's plenty of videos about Wales in the playlist as well as further afield. And here's Mel again. Bye! And it's a goodbye from me as well. Goodbye.